Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today here in Germany with Brabus and a hall filled with some pretty awesome cars to take a look at. We've had the Brabus Signature Night 2023 where they've introduced a whole host of new machinery and if you know anything about Brabus you know these are some pretty cool cars including the one I'm right next to, a new generation G-Wagon 6x6. This is the XLP Adventure 6x6. We've seen some of the earlier XLP Adventure models but Brabus and G-Wagon go hand in hand. Mercedes weren't going to be building a new six-wheeler of the new generation G. Brabus have done it. This being the 800, so the G63 upgraded to 800 horsepower. Plus, down that way, we also have the 900 with the enlarged 4.5 litre V8. We're going to be taking a look at both of those, plus a lot of other cars here, including the launch of the 911 Turbo S-based 900 Rocket R, limited to 25 cars. We also have the 750 Bodo Bushman edition, which is based on the new Mercedes SL. We've also got the Mercedes Maybach masterpiece and plenty more. We're here with Brabus in Bochum, Germany. So let's do this. Let's go have a look around and take in the new 6x6. This has been a really quite cool event and there are obviously a lot of cars that we're going to be taking a look at today Just to give you a quick walk around of what's here We'll take them all in for the moment the G-Wagon of course Brabus have been long known for their modifications with G-Wagons The 900 here in a throwback paint color from the 1970s from the Pagoda back then as it happens with the full white star And all of the carbon fiber on the exterior if we come through here We also have Brabus now wearing the name badge on the new generation Range Rover a few years back of course they did so under the StarTech brand, they've now brought it all in-house as a full Brabus vehicle. The Brabus name on the full lineup, so we're going to be taking a look at that. We've got the Brabus 850 on the Maybach, the full spec. Have a look at this car as well, the shadow chrome exterior, those wheels and that full light blue interior. We'll come back to that in a moment. We've got the new Smart Hashtag 1, over 400 horsepower in that. Of course, the 800 XLP Adventure 6x6, the white car here, this throws me back to the G63 AMG 6x6 of a few years ago, something that is of course hugely popular and those trade for well over a million. This being, we'll get to that in a moment as well. We have another Maybach over there, the full Brabus masterpiece, super black, black on black on black on black. We have the Brabus EQS here. Now this is actually quite interesting because what they've done with the Brabus modifications, the new face, the new wheels, lowering it, 15 mil at the front, 25 at the rear, has actually improved the drag by 7% and the effect of that is 60 kilometers extra range, wind tunnel tested. We'll go through more of that in a moment. We've got the full Brabus 900 GLS here as well. Again, the full 4.5 liter enlarged V8. This is the Brabus crawler. Effectively, they take a G-Wagon for the engine, the gearbox and the electronics, the ECUs, etc., and completely redo it to be this off-road buggy. Look at this, carbon fiber seats, the full cage, but the G-Wagon controls steering wheel, the largest Brabus carbon fiber piece for the full roof. That thing's just absolutely crazy. Come through here, we have the Brabus 800 4x4 squared, new 4x4 squared, of course, very popular car. I absolutely love them. The Brabus 800 upgrade on here, the 800 being the turbos, ECU, and some changes to boost it from the stock 585. This is the GT four door 63S E performance with new turbos, with some upgrades to 930 30 horsepower with the actually I think that's just exhaust uh, and software to get the full 930 horsepower then we have the Brabus 900 XLP 6x6 the full 900 horsepower version we're going to come back to this in a moment but 4.5 liters of V8 as opposed to the standard 4 litre new pistons cron rods crankshaft you name it to make all of that happen some beautiful classics the 280 SE 300 SL Roadster one of my favorite classic cars in the entire world but that's not all let's squeeze through over here and come and show you a few other cars lots of Brabus merchandise in the fashion line of course we've got the Shadow 900 boat over there this is the 750 Bodo uh, edition of the new Mercedes SL limited again to only 25 cars in total named after Bodo Bushman the founder of course of Brabus back in 1977 we've got another 4x4 squared that matches the spec of the boat and also this have a look at this the new 900 Rocket R based on the latest gen 992 Turbo S 
that's a whistle stop tour. Let's get back to the six by six. I promised you we'll run through all of the details of that. Coming over to this one then, you could argue the inferior version of the XLP Adventure six by six with only 800 horsepower. But let's have a walk around of this. The XLP Adventure when it launched was the pickup four by four version, if you will, long before they introduced the official four by four squared that Brabus now work on. This takes things up a notch because when the previous G63 six by six launched, it was a very peculiar car, exceptionally expensive, very limited appeal, but infinitely cool. And that's what made it something really quite special. This is Brabus taking the regular G63, if you will, the regular normal height vehicle, not a four by four squared, giving it an extended chassis, entirely new axles. In fact, they effectively cut the car kind of here. So everything here they've created in terms of the bodywork. This is actually full carbon fiber. Even these panels are carbon fiber. They've created the cage up here. They've made their own bespoke uh, roof rack system up there. If you come in here, obviously they've got their own off-roading wheel and tire setup, but everything back here is new. Independent suspension is new as well. Unlike on the regular car, you've got the Kevlar here for the wheel covers, as you can see inside. Obviously with the wide star package with the carbon fiber trims on the outside of it as well. It's full six by six, six wheel driven as you would expect from something like this. You can see the air tanks in here as well. These are the air tanks for the uh, system to adjust the tire pressures on the fly. So if you want to inflate or deflate the tires, because depending on the circumstances, if you're in the dunes, for example, you need to deflate and soften the tires. Sometimes if you're stuck, that can also help get the car out. Not only that, if we come and open up the tailgate to show you back here, they've also created their own bespoke tailgate. And actually the floor for this is made from soft teak. And they use this from their experience in the yachting world with the Brabus boat. So this is exactly what you'd find on a yacht because the wood that Mercedes used back on the G63 originally, because obviously tree sap would fall on it, it would get heat exposure, sun exposure. They had to replace them all. So Brabus using their own experience to make that. As I mentioned, carbon fiber panels, but obviously metal finish inside you've got these storage buckets you've got all sorts of things back here a huge flatbed at the rear of the car for anything you could want in there as well what else do we have well i suppose we should come and talk about the engine about what they've done with that because the g-wagon has the nine speed amg speed shift automatic gearbox in this case it's electronically limited to only only a thousand newton meters of torque along with that 800 horsepower inside which we're going to come to in a moment there are loads of touches and details as well if we come round towards the front for a moment and apologies for the background noise they're de-rigging from the fashion show next door pop this open where you've got the power bulge with the full carbon piece up top there is of course our 800 horsepower four liter twin turbocharged v8 that we know from amg new turbos new engine components, ECU, upgrades to insane power. Plus this car has the full bull bar protection at the front, along with the towing hitch and all the controls inside for that. Of course, everything is new. The grill, the front diffuser, splitter down here, the badging in the black that we have there for the six by six. Closing down the bonnet, not the easiest thing in the world, given quite how high it is up there, but we'll shut it down into place. I suppose I should jump inside and show you the interior of this. Open the door, familiar G-Wagon feel, always have to love that clunk. And of course, as you open it, the sidestep comes down as well. That's Brabus's own sidestep. This car doesn't have the exhaust system that we'll find on the other with the illuminated tailpipes, as we saw on the G Rocket that I checked out in the past. But inside is where it's all Brabus, it's all bespoke. We're talking new leather found pretty much throughout on every surface. We're talking all of the embroideries and patterns, as you can see. We're talking all of the anodized components, whether it's your seat controls or even the mirror and window switches up there, the air vents, everything, you name it in here has been completely reworked carpets illuminated carbon fiber side sills the seats of course as well familiar g in many ways i used to own a g63 and i'm sure i will have another one again in the future but inside the screens the diff lock buttons also of course anodized interesting thing here when you lock the rear axle it locks all four wheels together as you'd probably expect but you've still got your g modes and your different driving settings of course all of the climate control and everything anodized with these red touches to suit or contrast i should say against the white on the exterior of this car we've got the badging there on the 
uh, grab handle, the G-Wagon grab handle. Down here in the central console, you'll spot a new screen that Brabus have created. This is where you control your tire inflation amongst other bespoke features through this tablet right down there inside this front storage, which of course you can tuck away as well. But it's basically familiar G-Wagon inside with all of those luxury fittings and finishings that Brabus add to really complete the package. In the back, exactly the same as in the regular G63, it's only changed from these seats backwards. This is where, of course, we have the window through to the pickup to the flatbed back there. Quite unusual to think that is right behind you when you're driving in the G-Wagon. And as I mentioned up top, I just stand up on the sidestep. We've got this new piece up here as well, like they have done on previous models to be able to climb up onto the roof. Technically, I could step into the flatbed and step up top, I'm sure, right now and have a pretty cool view over the entirety of this event. You have got to love that feeling. When you close the doors, of course, the side steps then fold up as well. But all of these other t t details and touches that Brabus add to the car, the carbon side pieces, the Brabus logos on the handles, obviously the Biturbo 800 badging, the illumination down the side steps as well. Everything about it is really pretty cool. Continuing our tour around the EQS 53 from AMG, and I know petrol heads, electric, that's a topic for another day. What's impressive is that Brabus have managed to improve the drag of this by 7.2%. That's adding on these various different parts. Of course, their full carbon fiber look as well. We've got the new wheels that the car wears, and obviously, as I mentioned, the ride height being lowered too, along with a lip spoiler at the back, and the same add-ons that you have here in front of the rear wheels also. Inside, this car sports the full upgraded interior obviously you can go totally bespoke change the materials the finish but with all of the leathers the stitching patterns and different things that you can add to the car and to be honest you have to appreciate the work that's gone into that the wind tunnel testing to be able to improve it in that way coming through the 900 gls gls of course the height of luxury for the mercedes suvs there is the Maybach derivative but this being the 900 horsepower 4.5 liter upgraded enlarged v8 that we're going to be focusing on a little more in a second over this side though i need to show you this particular car and i've actually got the key for this one as well the Maybach. but check out the interior of this the full 850 from the v12 the 6 liter enlarged to 6.3 but look at the inside of this and obviously this is a demonstration of what brabus can do but the full tiffany blue inspired finish that we have here all of the quiltings the carpets the sides of the seats everything retrimmed recovered creating something that's really quite extraordinary to say the least and obviously being the my back have a look at the rear of this as well look at the luxury back here look at that car that is quite splendid, if I can say so myself. 900 horsepower, again, over a thousand newton meters of torque. They take that six liter by turbo V12. They make it 6.3, new pistons, conrods, crankshaft, all of the different components that could possibly be required to make that happen. And this is your result. Now, similarly to that car, I want to come through to the Brabus Range Rover. So as I mentioned, we've had StarTech for the Range Rover products before. They've now brought it in-house as a full Brabus vehicle. And this particular car, if I show you inside, has a pistachio interior. Have a look at this again. Look at the way they've even done down to the floors and every single surface is covered by Brabus, is made into this ultimate luxury vehicle, luxury experience. Obviously this has a power increase as well, up to 600 horsepower, new wheels, full new design. In fact, completely new bumper. The whole lower section is all new, the exhaust system. Same with the bumper up at the front as well. All new parts, matching brake calipers to the front. Plus, come and have a look at the badging back here. These details around that you have, which you've probably seen on a number of the cars to match as well, to be able to give it that look. So the full 600 horsepower new Range Rover, carbon lip up here, all of the different parts, plus even more to go and see. Let's come and talk about this then. The new Brabus 900 Rocket R based on the 992 Turbo S. Now this is a completely new look, a limited package, only 25 units in total. Of course, as you can see, the full carbon fiber lip around the front. We've got this whole wide body. And in fact, you can see quite how much wider this sits than the standard car. Obviously housing new wheels as well, completely new wheel design. You've got the aero blade covers, as you can see, especially looking Looking inside those. Ride height lowered, new exhaust system, again enlarged with new intakes here, 
for the cooling, the way the airflow is managed inside those blades. I think this is quite impressive because they've created a totally new look for the Turbo S as opposed to feeling like something else. They've gone away with the, or done away with the rear spoiler that you'd normally have in its place, the ducktail with this extra carbon lip up the top. We've got the Brabus lettering across the back. And again, as I said, that new exhaust system, as well as all of the aero parts that you can see around looking very wide and very impressive. I have the key for it here as well, just to come and show you inside, show you what it's like inside here, completely retrimmed, redone, even the illuminated footwell down there on the footrest also. But again, we're seeing those anodized details for the door handles, the speaker grills, along with the illuminated sills, plus the completely retrimmed interior that you have the full Brabus interior package, the dark gray for the leather here with the red piping and the contrast, even down to all of the little details, continuing around the B pillars, the full dashboard, central console surround, and obviously as the name suggests, 900 horsepower out of this. Big, big numbers, impressive power. In fact, the only stock parts on here, doors, roof, and bonnet. I think that's basically it. The rest all heavily modified. Obviously the cooling for the twin turbocharged flat six back here, but serious power now made out of this. And I have to say when that rolled out for the initial presentation, there were a lot of whoops and gasps from the audience because it looks really, really good. They've done a very nice job with this using the rocket name on the 992 Turbo S. And there it is the introduction from Signature Night. Another new introduction then, the Brabus 750 Bodo Bushman Edition, one of 25, based on the new Mercedes-AMG SL63. Now this is a link back to the 90s cars, hence the wheels, as you'll see, the new Monoblock 2 Evo wheel design, which is very reminiscent of the cars back from then. We've got the shadow black on this side with the satin black on the other side, but this takes power predictably up to 750 horsepower, 900 newton meters, limited to only 25 units. We've got the new grille with those inserts off towards the sides of the Panamericana. You've got the adaptive cruise sensor in the center, the lower carbon lip, obviously the enlarged aero blades around the intakes at the front, new side pieces as well come towards the rear. Car sits very low and has a very aggressive diffuser back here, housing the new Brabus exhaust system also. Can we show you the interior? Arguably, we don't even need to pop open the doors, but we will just to take a look inside here at what Brabus have done with this. You can see the inlays with the diamond quilting, Again, familiar touches we've seen, but with that signature plaque, the Bodo Bushman edition, one of 25, named after the late founder of Brabus, the company, which is of course expanding in a very big way and putting together the most impressive of launches, as you can see with all the cars that we have around here. But we also need to pop back to this to talk about the 900 engine. We come then to the flagship, you could say, the 900 XLP Adventure. And there are a few things I'd like to show you about this. One, well, two things to do with the engine. The other, I've now had permission to go and stand on the top of it. So wish me luck for that. But first up, let's talk engine, because of course this has the full upgrade, the full 900 horsepower. And that comes from enlarging the engine to four and a half liters as opposed to the regular four liter. As I open this, you will see that we've got the power window. You can see through from above when you're sat inside the car to the engine, which has this red carbon fiber top. We've of course got new pistons, con rods, new crankshaft, new turbos, new just about everything to take power up from 585 in the stock car to 900. 315 horsepower up from standard. Of course, torque up by a couple of hundred newton meters as well, all handled by that automatic gearbox along with the six wheel drive powertrain. There's a lot going on. You can see this car is different up front because it doesn't have the ball bars and some of the other things. Still got the winch and still of course have the new look with everything that's going on on it. That is really quite high. And then you still have that same visual finish. Obviously the look inside here and the window through towards the engine. Up top, we've also got a different look to the lights. The other car had the four single lights. This has more of the light bar or the three light bars almost, you could say, running across. But obviously again, wide star package, carbon, different look and feel in some ways. This exhaust system, and actually if I unlock the car, I think we can uh, illuminate this. No, we'll need to turn on the ignition. Bear with me one second. Let's just press the button in here to turn it on because when this is on, there we go, powered up. Check that out. The exhaust tailpipes are illuminated. How cool is that? I think it's just a really cool touch. We saw on the Rocket 
originally. Inside here again, you can do all of the changes and things that you might like with the car. Now, coming round towards the back of this, I'm not sure what the best technique is. Obviously in here, we've got a slightly different finish to the, uh, the deck, to the tail lid. I need to work out how to climb up and there's not gonna be any dignified way to do this. So let me just, ah, that wasn't too bad, I think. Swing up, swing in, and then um, I guess I'm gonna climb on here and uh, make my way up to the top. <laughs> All right, not a bad view from up here. How fun is that? You could go and get yourself lost in the wilderness, maybe even put a tent up on top, sleep on it, and go travel anywhere you want in literally the XLP adventure. Well, this is the view then from the top here in the Jahrhunderthalle in Bochum, where we are at the moment for the unveil with all of the cars. And I am standing perched on the floor that you have on the top of the 6x6. That view through to the engine is really quite nice down there as well. But obviously all of the different cars, the other all the way towards the far end, the 4x4 squares, the crawler, the G-Wagons, Range Rover, e-performance right in front of us, the other Rocket 900 in the full black on black on black spec that we have there and obviously the display down at this end as well. Well, I've been taking in what it's like up top on this and the interesting thing as well, by the way, while this is a fairly new vehicle, the white one has done, I think, 30 something thousand kilometers of testing to make sure that it's ready, of course, and been thoroughly tested prior to the global unveiling. Back down on the ground though, I should probably show you that every car actually has these really helpful signs that tell us a bit more about them, except I'm gonna point that out. This is a big ticket acquisition, 1.4 million euros, including taxes for the new 6x6, which actually, interestingly, is about the price point of the G63 AMGs that exist in the world, of which I think there were less than 100 originally. The idea behind this is that they can build up to 10 a year. Of course, customer demand is going to dictate exactly how many get built in total. There isn't a specific limited number, per se, of the new Brabus XLP Adventure 6x6, but it's so cool that things like that exist, and it's so cool that they still make cars like this, just outrageous amounts of power. I mean, a GT four-door with nearly a thousand horsepower, the e-performance, of course, 63S e-performance with the new hybrid system. Yes, it added some weight, but to drive was a really, really fantastic experience in the regular factory car. That, of course, takes it even further. And obviously just the other creations that are around us today as part of this launch of all of the new products at Signature Night. So I had a pretty fantastic time here. A big thanks to the team at Brabus for the invitation, the opportunity to be here and to share the new cars with you. 6x6 six six of a new G, that's something I think a lot of us were waiting to see. I make no secret of my love of the new 4x4 four four squared, and I'm still hoping that that might be able to happen down the line, but this, this is next level completely. This is totally dialing it up massively beyond the top, I would say. That's it for now, though. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.